Hello everyone, welcome to today's video and uh, today we will be discussing pathogenesis of Entamoeba histolytica infection. So this is the illustration that I will create. As you can see, this is the image representing uh, the damage that is caused to the intestinal uh, intestinal wall and you can see different layers. We'll talk about these layers. We'll also talk about what is the damage that uh, Entamoeba histolytica can cause to the intestine. And as you can see, there are different types of uh, damages that are, that are there. One is uh, is the flask shaped ulcer second one is uh, perforation and then we have uh, the, the different components of the intestinal wall right so let's get started and uh, we'll, we'll design all those things as we we design our illustrations and i'm sure now uh, you all are well familiar uh, with the way that we understand a particular concept right before that i'm i'm again going to explain a few things for example uh, let's look at it this is trophozoid and this is the cyst form cyst is not going to cause the damage because this is inactive form uh, this is the form that is um, it's going to help antimoeba histolytica uh, survive in the environment and this is the form which is active inside the host it's called trophozoite and this is the cyst form moving next and i have explained all these in my previous videos after after that video where i've explained cyst and uh, the trophozoite i made this video where i've explained the life cycle of endomeba histolytica in detail and thank you so much for for uh, encouraging response for this particular video and in that uh, in that uh, process now next is the pathogenesis of antimoeba histolytica here you can see there is uh, a damage going on into the intestine and when when trophozoites are uh, are released they are going to certainly cause the damage to the intestine a lot of lot of complications they can happen uh, during that i haven't explained those things in this video i will be explaining that in today's video so let's let's move on to uh, the 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 slide where I'll, I'll design all those things right i'll also explain these things one by one uh, what are the different parts and what are their functions so hopefully you will be able to understand uh, uh, the intestine also in this uh, particular video so we'll start with the the first layer so i have the illustration for the first layer i've already designed it it took it took a little bit time because as you can see if i zoom in uh, you will probably realize uh, the details so i have to create the uh, i have to create these things from scratch and all the cells i have to align them and finally we have this illustration over here so this is this is what this is our mucosa so i have also the label for this one so let me label it down uh, this is the mucosa right now what is mucosa we need to understand the mucosa or it is also known as intestinal mucosa lines the digestive tract and it consists of various layers you have epithelial cells you have lamina propria you have muscularis uh, mucosae so other layers are also there in this in this uh, particular section and as you can see muscularis mucosa is also there so i'm going to add it up but this is the topmost section uh, i'm going to show you right in this one the role the main role is as you can see there is a lot of lot of uh, folding that is happening in folding of the membrane so as to increase the surface area and another important point is uh, is to absorb nutrients and it also acts as the barrier against harmful substances pathogens and it has also immune system or immune cells that can that can basically secrete protective mucus and also some uh, specific enzymes that can protect this layer so this is very very important next is a healthy intestinal mucosa is really critical for digestion nutrient absorption and overall health of the individual intestine healthy intestine is very very important so when when there is complication in the intestine uh, intestinal wall there will be you know deficiency of various nutrients and because of that a lot of complications are going to occur now let's move on to the second second portion of this one which is uh, muscularis mucosa uh, which i have designed uh, here so i've tried to give it a it is a kind of a feel of a muscles as you can see it's, it's like that so, so uh, i hope you can understand this is uh, the layer where we have a lot of muscles uh, so this is the the layer correct so this is a uh, muscularis mucosa uh, i'll just uh, decrease the size of this one so that it is comparable muscularis mucosa this one now what is muscularis mucosa it is uh, it is found in mucosal layer of digestive tract i've already told you that it will contain epithelial cells muscularis mucosa and all the other portions now why it is important it is a thin layer of smooth muscles so what kind of muscles are there the thin mus uh, the smooth muscles are there and it's a very thin layer it helps in the motion and the movement of the mucosa so as we all know the role of muscle is in uh, movement so in case of intestine there, there should be particular movement going on in, in this section so that uh, you know a lot of functions they can occur the movement of the the, the waste should 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 also uh, carry forward so many things can happen next is it is helpful in the propelling content so that means uh, it will it will allow the the intestine to move the content that is there so again I, I need to i need to again explain that i'm just uh, showing this the section of intestine right intestine is a tube so i'm just showing the transport section of this one so just imagine if the intestine is cut down what the sections will look like and it will have another portion uh, the mirror image of that so that it can form a tube i hope that is clear Next is it works uh, with deeper muscles for digestion and transport. So there is another layer of uh, the muscles below that, and it works along with that layer uh, to move the food material, right? Okay. So first is clear mucosa. Second one is muscularis mucosa. That is also clear. And basically, what I'm mentioning here, these are the epithelial cells, and these are the villi, and then you will have uh, you know uh, smaller, smaller infoldings in there because uh, to increase the surface area. All right. Now moving on to the sub sub mucosa. This is also an, again an important component, and uh, which one is sub mucosa? 
let me again uh, show you so i have illustration which is next to this one this is the sub submucosa that i've designed correct and i'll also explain what is submucosa what is the role of uh, submucosa and all so submucosa is below uh, the layer of muscularis mucosa so this is the submucosa over here and what is submucosa submucosa is uh, basically it is it is the layer that is positioned beneath the mucosal layer it contains blood vessels so that is i'm trying to show these dots over here it contains blood vessels it also contains nerves lymphatics so these dots you can you can uh, imagine that there are these connections and uh, further it aids nutrients and water absorption in the digestion and there are so so many other functions also will not go into the detail right so why am i explaining all those things uh, currently i will be explaining according to the video is uh, how the pathogenesis of endomyelitis lytica uh, basically occurs but you need to understand the structure of the intestine first right so after submucosa i'll uh, decrease the size of this one otherwise it's not proportional uh, next one is circular muscles. So you have longitudinal muscles and circular muscles. So I'll show that with another structure that I've created over here. So I think uh, we can use this one. Uh, right. So this is a little bit thin. So what I can do is move this on the top because the top layer is uh, relatively uh, thinner than the bottom layer. Right. So that is why I'm, I'm just moving it. Uh, down and I'm keeping the top layer over there. I can even move this layer like this so that it is proportional so I'm, I'm going to move uh, this muscle layer on the top and the thicker one on the bottom and this one is the submucosa uh, layer over here okay all right so you have uh, submucosa sorry not submucosa submucosa is this one and then circular muscles and circular muscles are the muscles that are really really important for various uh, functions so that we'll <clears throat> we'll discuss here now why why uh, the circular muscles are there the role of circular muscles is uh, basically they are arranged in rings uh, in the digestive tract and the contraction narrow down the uh, the tract's inner space so just to narrow down the tract inner space you need circular muscles they are responsible for the peristaltic peristaltic wave coordination so the movement of uh, the intestine peristalsis is controlled by the circular muscles over here although that is the combined uh, uh, basically coordinated uh, uh, function next is it forms uh, sphincters uh, controlling material movement so basically these are uh, these are uh, larger and all larger number and they basically control the movement of uh, of the material uh, along with the musculus mucosa right so that is another important function now moving on to the next one after that we have uh, another structure which is uh, longitudinal muscles so i have uh, this section that i've designed uh, since they all are muscles so i just have to use uh, this particular shade to represent this so this just imagine this is uh, the longitudinal muscle over here so this is the longitudinal muscle and now discuss let's discuss the the important role of the longitudinal muscles so longitudinal muscles they run along the length of the digestive tract it's a muscular layer they work uh, they work along with circular muscles for the coordinated contraction movements and uh, basically their role is to move uh, the content forward right so that is uh, important uh, for for uh, clearing the digestive tract next is uh, you have serosa this is again a very very important part of the intestine serosa and what is serosa uh, first let me break down uh, the the serosa and uh, you can see i have this red colored structure over here and it is uh, uh, giving that nice illustration it contains uh, some features also okay so i have to increase the size of this one this is serosa and let me again add the another uh, uh, layer which is the last layer i have to move this layer on top of this and that is uh, nothing but is the lining of the intestinal wall it's also known as uh, peritoneal lining so this is longitudinal muscle over here this is the peritoneal lining Correct. This is the peritoneal lining, and this is the serosa, which is uh, bright pink in color. And I have those uh, important structures that are generated by entomy by histolytica. Correct. Now, moving next, this is our intestine, basically. This is how our intestine is. Animal intestine, human intestine is. This is the general features. Now, what happens during uh, during uh, the infection by entomy by histolytica is there is a damage to various uh, various uh, portion of the intestine. Now, let's talk about serosa. Serosa is the outermost layer of the gut wall. That we need to remember. This is the outermost uh, layer of the gut wall. Next is, uh, it offers protection and uh, reduces the friction during digestion. This this particular layer. That is what I'm talking about. It produces, it also produces lubrication, uh, serious fluids for smoo smoother movements. So, uh, lubricating fluid will be uh, released. It's also known as serous fluid that will be released by this particular uh, uh, layer and then uh, next is often continues with the abdominal visceral peritoneum so this is the uh, the peritoneal lining and then it is very very close uh, to the layer which is serosa correct so i hope this is clear now moving on to uh, the damage that is caused by antimiba histolytica so antimiba histolytica is, is known to cause uh, flask shaped ulcer and perforation and also uh, another feature is uh, the invasion of the blood vessels Right? So from there it can spread out uh, into different portion of the body so we'll start with the flask shaped uh, ulcer so this is the ulcer that i've designed and uh, uh, i'll place it right over here so i have designed it in a way that it will actually uh, exactly fit in in this region uh, let me just again probably i have to do a little bit adjustment okay so i think that should be okay that should look uh, right okay. so the size of this uh, 
ulcer is up to submucosa layer, not up to circular muscles. So that is uh, something we need to know. Uh, sometimes we can have very, very deep uh, ulcers also. So I'm just making this up to uh, the sub, uh, submucosa and the circular muscle layer. Now, as you can see, what is happening in this case is there is the formation of ulcer. And the specific feature in this case is the formation of ulcer, which is flask shaped like this. And that is uh, unique to the endometrial histolytica infection. What happens in this case is uh, basically flask shaped ulcers. Uh, they are uh, they are similar to the flasks. They develop in the colon uh, mucosal lining. That is an important point we need to remember. Linked primarily to the endometrial histolytica infection. So when there is uh, these kind of unique flask shaped ulcers that are unique to the endometrial histolytica infection, commonly found in uh, ascending colon, these ulcers are relatively deep and penetrating tissues. So that is very very important. That is because of that there will be inflammation. There will be tissue damage uh, around the the region that is I'm uh, representing with with its dark uh, dark. Uh, or brown color, right? It can it can lead to another structure which is perforation. Now, what happens in perforation? We need to understand that this is uh, one schematic that uh, I'm using to represent uh, what happens in perforation. So, as you can see here, it can go all the way from the mucosa layer. It will damage everything up until peritoneal lining. So, huge damage to the intestine. So, when the huge damage to the intestine happens, we call it as a the perforation in the intestine. So when, when there is perforation in the intestine, that indicates very very severe case, and it can lead uh, to lot of lot of complications in the intestine. Next is you can also uh, you know there, there there are sometimes also some other damages uh, to the intestine and uh, small small uh, you know uh, ulcers that can be there correct and they can uh, and this is I'm representing over here uh, I have to decrease uh, the size of this one so that indicates that smaller ulcers can be there and uh, this basically indicates if uh, there is there is a kind of like damage uh, and then uh, the uh, the hysterica, uh, is basically is uh, it's present uh, present over there. Right, so you have uh, structural features, and I have to uh, off of uh, endometrial histolytic pathogenesis. I have to label them now. Sin sinus formation. What is sinus formation? We need to understand. So sinus formation is uh, very very unique uh, to uh, endometrial histolytic infection. What happens in sinus is sinus formation is sinus is a, is an ulcer referred to the channel. So when there is this channel formation or cavity uh, is there on the surface of the ulcer that goes deeper deeper into the tissue. It is often a result of tissue destruction and uh, inflammation or infection. Sinus can form due to erosion of the tissue around the ulcer region. So huge damage can occur, inflammation can occur, and there will be the sinus formation over there. The presence of sinus can complicate the healing process. When there is sinus, then the healing process will be will be longer as compared to the other cases. So as you can see, there are a lot of complications with sinus. Now moving on to the perforation. And uh, okay, now I have to also mention that this is the deep lesion that can occur. So I have this, I have to move this uh, over here. So this is very, very deep extension. And when extension is too deep, uh, this is uh, the base, uh, this is uh, really damaging to the host. And another thing that can happen is uh, the invasion to the blood vessels. So that is also I've tried to highlight over here. I'm sorry they are overlapping. So I think I have to move this deep extension. I'll just uh, label it over here because this is also very, very deep. Next is invasion of the blood vessels. So this this one, uh, that is what I'm trying to show. So you have invasion of uh, the blood vessels. And from here, now things can become really complicated. And then extra intestinal MEBSs can occur, and which is again uh, very dangerous. Now. Uh, Final thing that is perforation, and I'll also explain what perforation is. Perforation is this when there is a extension of this uh, this entire damage up until all the tissues. It's very very deep, and we call it as a perforation. Now, what is perforation? And then we'll conclude this uh, this topic. Perforation is basically refers to the rupture or a hole that forms in the wall of the intestine due to severe tissue damage. If the damage is very very high, that there is a hole in the intestine, it's a perforation. It's uh, we can we can refer that as a perforation. In the context of uh, maybe ulcer, perforation can occur when the when the ulcer erodes to the intestinal wall. So if if it goes all the way down to the intestinal wall and then it's a perforation. Perforation is the serious complication of MEB ulcer. As you can see, it's going to be very, very serious and requires immediate medical attention, right? Now, another feature is there, which is invasion of the blood vessels. What happens in this case, and amoeba histolytica, histolytica can also invade blood vessels, and from there it can it can go uh, to the deeper layers of the intestinal wall. It can also move from ulcer sites to the other organs, and it can also move to uh, the liver uh, and cause extra intestinal uh, MEBSs. So all these all these uh, features they are really important. They contribute towards the pathogenesis of uh, antimiba histolytica. And uh, as you can see, a lot of damage can occur uh, in the in the host. Antimiba histolytica have a lot of virulence factors. And I'll just name few antimiba histolytica as amoeb lactin antigen. It contains uh, various enzymes like cysteine proteases that can cause the damage to the intestine. It can also have collagenases because uh, muscles are there, um, and then collagen will be there. It is it is cleaving the entire thing, so that means collagenases are also there. A lot of research is going into that direction. Hydrolytic enzymes, uh, proteases, phosphatases, RNases uh, are also known to present 
the in the intubation facility and they are causing destruction to the the tissue and then metallocollagenases collagenases are also there neuroaminidases uh, aminidases are also also there and they help in invasion we can discuss all these virulence factors in in detail and uh, one by one i can explain all those things in my next video and i hope this video was helpful for you to understand the pathogenesis we have already covered the life cycle and you can uh, you can see here how the damage uh, of the intestinal wall which is the pathogenesis uh, of the intubation infection uh, can can do to the intestine uh, which is really dam damaging and uh, complicating the entire process so i hope that now uh, you have better understanding of pathogenesis of intubation histolytica infection you have better understanding of life cycle as well as structure of trophozoite uh, incest we'll meet in the next video and i'll try to bring more videos more topics which uh, which will help you in your studies which will help you in your projects so please stay tuned and do support the channel your support is very very important without your support it is not going to be possible for me to make all these videos so please do share the video uh, do hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel so thank you everyone i will meet in the next video